Miss Jade oil green carving. Two. Good afternoon and welcome to Jewelry Makers calendar make along and if you haven't met me before I'm Debbie Kershaw and it's lovely to have your company this afternoon well we're going to be opening box number seven now I know it's in there because I've got this calendar it's epic so let's have a look in box number seven so if you haven't been watching us up to now this is our calendar that we have sold and every day you're going to get a make along with whichever product is inside with a different guest designer so that you get lots and lots of inspiration on maybe what you like to do with the products inside so actually that's weird because seven's my lucky number right i just need my glasses so i obviously know what's in here already so i was lucky enough to receive and you always know it's good when you get one of those anti-tarnish papers a beautiful length of sterling silver no less um, paperclip chain so this can be used for so many different things but I thought let's use it to make a charm bracelet because I do like to work with tools and as, as if you know my work then you'll know that I do like to have a little dabble with my tools and my hammers and get hammering and adding texture to things so actually if I turn that the other way it's um, I'll put it on overhead, shall I? So that it hangs down like that, because it looked a bit funny. Well, there you go, there it is. So all I've done is actually added in some little pearls. I've made a sterling silver little star charm, and I'll talk you through how to do that. And then I've also added a little sort of pearl drop to that. And also on the back, I added some little pearls as well. But obviously it's completely up to you what you do with these items, but hopefully this will give you food for thought and give you some, some inspiration of what to do with it. So before we start, let's go through the sorts of tools that you'll need to make this project. So you've got your chain and let's measure it. I think it's eight inches, but let's have a measure so that you've got an idea of what you might do with it. I've got a ruler here. So let's have a little look. So we've got, yes, eight inches, which is about 21 centimetres of chain. So depending on your wrist size, you could definitely get, and especially if you're adding in, because I'm adding, adding in some rosary link components, um, you can probably get a bracelet, maybe, if you're lucky, fingers crossed, some earrings out of this as well. Um, if you are watching and live and you want to send a message or write a comment, do, because I've been up since 4 a.m. and I love to know that I'm actually talking to someone. <laughs> Because if I make sense, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So let's go through the tools that you might be needing. So you've got your chain, and then you need something that you're going to use to actually make your star charm. Now, I think that it figures that if you've got this beautiful 925 sterling silver chain, that you're going to want to use some sterling silver. But of course, you don't have to. You can use copper, you can use whatever sheet that you have. So you can see I've been playing with stars in this one already. I've cut out three. So this is a sheet of sterling silver. Um, you can also, here at Jewelry Maker, we do all different ones and have done from time to time. And if you haven't got some of the other tools that I'm going to mention, we do sell the sterling silver sheet that is already uh, textured. So if you haven't got sort of the texturing hammers and the bits and pieces that I'm going to mention in a moment, you can buy the sheet already textured. So any sort of sheet that you have lying around or that you can grab on our website will be fine. So anything sort of about 0 0.5 is about the, uh, the best size to use with the tool. Now, obviously you need to use something to make the shape. And what I used was, I'll pop it on my block here, this, um, looking forward to your demo. Thank you for all your inspirations. Mwah! Sharon, hello. Lovely, thank you for messaging. I know someone's there, apart from maybe my dogs are somewhere looking, watching me. So um, this is a lovely star cutter. And maybe some of you have bought this in the past from JM. We've done square ones, we've done circular ones. Um, so this is a great little tool for making quick charms. Don't worry if you don't have one of these because you can use your metal shears or your metal saw to actually make a shape as well. Of course, it doesn't have to be a star. Now also you're going to need, and this is actually my 
favourite tool ever, and it's a great thing to use when you're stressed. <laughs> Never saw when you're stressed. Hammer when you're stressed. So I've got a couple of hammers here, and we were talking earlier about adding the texture. By the texture, I basically mean the pattern to your sheet of metal. So on the piece that I did, I actually added that manually with a metal stamp, um, but you can also use textured hammers and we also do those here or have done at JM and they tend to have different textures on both sides so on this side we've got that little dappled effect and on this side we've kind of got the stripes so these are a great way of adding texture another way that you can add texture which is what I've actually done on the finished piece is a metal stamp so this is just like a little swirly metal stamp you or you can personalize as well so if you've got letter stamps you can put someone's name maybe you want to put a date you can personalize things even further but for the actual one that I made for the calendar I use this little swirl flourish which I'll show you later now you're also going to need something to make a hole in your charm so that you can attach it to your jump ring and you can use a drill for that you can use um, a hand drill or a, a rotary tool like a dremel I actually love these pliers and these are just hole making pliers We've also done hole making punches before now as well. So anything that you've got that you usually make a hole with um, should be fine for this because you're going to obviously need to attach your charm to your bracelet. And then last but not least, adding some patina to your finished texture will help that texture to really pop, to really sort of stand out. So you can get very professional and use some liver of sulfur or other patinas, but otherwise you can just use a permanent marker. And I'll show you how I do that when we come to that part. So a permanent marker. And then just to make sure that everything's finished off really beautifully and everything looks really professional, you don't have to have, you know, your rotary tools. If you've got those, of course, you can use them. But I tend to find that this seems to be, uh, I think, mine and Claire McDonald's favourite tool. <laughs> it's a four-sided nail buffer, but it's actually incredible for finishing off your work and it's very inexpensive. And a couple of jewellery files as well so just to take off any burrs any sharp edges and I think yes that's it should we get making all right so the first thing that I'm going to do is decide on the length of the bracelet that I want now you need to bear in mind that if you are going to be adding rosary linked pearls in there it's going to extend your bracelet length so you can be very exact with this and you can actually measure your pearls and measure your chain and work out your finish length including the pearls because if you can get away with snipping a little bit off of the end that you can make some earrings or something with why not because you're making that that calendar piece go even further so what I'm going to do I see I'm not a very exacting jewelry maker I tend to do everything by eye is going to make the star first of all so I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to bring in my tool and I'll be doing a little bit of that as we go along so I'm going to use my star cutter and everything that you see me using here is JM and what it is is it just has this sort of little bit of um, <laughs> I'm going the wrong way there we go we can see it so you've got this here so that you can actually insert your metal sheet into that so if I show you from the side it makes it a bit more obvious of what I'm going to do and then you need to make sure that your piece of metal is actually filling the hole concerned so if we have a look at that on the overhead if that was halfway in can you see I wouldn't get a star shape because I've got that kind of gap in the shape you need to make sure that your piece of metal is going to completely fill that star shape there so I'm going to use a piece that I used before because I've got just the right little amount there of sterling silver left so you need to find the punch that goes with that seems too small I think this is the right one yeah so you need to find the punch that actually goes into the right slot and to keep the longevity of these tools I would um, recommend that you use some cut lubrication which we do here which I've misplaced or you can use some beeswax and then what you do is you just pop your beeswax you could you can actually if you haven't got any of these things you can use um, a candle and go through another really lovely um, motif to do is hearts so if you want to make hearts and 
Oh, yeah, stars, hearts and flowers tend to be sort of very, very popular because you can personalise those. So there is a heart disc cutter on the screen. So if you're, if you're thinking, hold on a minute, I, I really fancy that tool. There's only 14 left of these. So obviously, if you're watching on playback and not live, um, have a look and see if we've got any left. But your item code is there. And your so if you're thinking, oh, yeah, I could do with one of those. Because imagine how difficult it is to saw out a star and saw out a heart. And these will last you. Look after them, and they will last you for years and years. So there's your. Oh, that's a good price. So you've got um, ninety-five pounds on that ZOG X fifty-one, and it's ninety-five pounds. Right. So what I'm going to do is pop my sterling silver sheet, and I think I'm going to use this one here. So it goes into the slot, and then I'm going to just. I need to just pop. Excuse me if I get my head in the camera. I just need to look over the top and what I'm doing is I'm making sure so I'm getting my head right over the top because obviously I wouldn't usually make like this in my studio <laughs> um, I'm not usually talking to one apart from the dogs and the cat so you can put your metal in so that it fills so you're not going to chop essentially like any little corners off of your motif whether it be a heart or a star and then the part that I've put the um, lubrication onto I'm just going to pop on. Now I tend to put this on a metal block which is like this, you can see that's well used can't you, and a rubber block. Now what the rubber block does, it dampens the sound. So if you are, um, as I was hammering the other day, my husband was having a business meeting in the next room <laughs> and I didn't know and I was going bang bang, oh sorry, um, this will dampen the sound a bit. So if you're wanting to keep it um, a little bit quieter. Now you need to use a, ha a hammer you're comfortable with. It doesn't want to be a very lightweight hammer. It wants to be sort of a heavyish. So you might want to steal one from the shed or maybe you've got one of these heavier hammers that you use for your tools. And then all you do is you whack it. So this is going to get noisy. Stop halfway. <laughs> I'll be in trouble with next door. So you'll see that it'll start to go down quite easily and quite quickly. And what I'm going to do now is just really whack it so it comes out the other side and what you'll see when I lift the tool is a little star will pop out hopefully but you know anything could happen there we go so how quick was that now if you pierce with a saw you know what a hassle that would be to saw out and then sometimes you find that you can pull out the star from the other side but more often than not because it's such a good fit to get it out usually I will just get a smaller um, little star and then that takes it out and then you can just pull the rest of your metal out okay so let's move this here so what this has left me with is my little star motif so essentially now I've got a sterling silver little charm now as you work with metal you work hard on it so the more you do to it the harder it gets if when you get your silver or whatever you're using, if you feel that it feels really, really strong and hard, you can always heat it first so that it softens it, which we call annealing, um, and put it through. So if you put it through the machine and thought, oh, that didn't really work, then maybe you need to soften that metal a little bit, which you do by heating with a torch. But usually a 0.5 should be quite quite um, okay to go through if you're using maybe a 0.8 or something like that that can be a bit harder and you might need to heat it first so because that's already been punched through I've already made it a little bit harder so when I start to add some texture it's going to make it harder still so this would be the opportune point to to add my hole to to my motif so I'm going to move my block out of the way and then what you need to do is have a good look at your star and have a think about where you might want to put that hole. Now I've made the mistake before of going far too near the end so that when you actually make the hole what you get is a little nick out of the side instead of a hole in the center. Um, bear in mind also how you're going to attach it to your bracelet so if you're going to attach it with a jump ring and you put your hole right down here you'd need quite a big jump ring to attach it. So just have a think about how you're going to attach that. So the best thing that I found to do is get the good old permanent marker because this will always come off later with sanding or with a bit of nail varnish remover and give yourself a guide as to roughly where you want that hole to be. So now if you've got your rotary tool, you've got your Dremel or, or whatever, you can use that. Um, or if you've got, in my case, 
hole punching pliers or a hole punching little equipment then we're just going to make a little hole so I'm going to just make sure that my punch is where my line is and then I'm actually going to look all the way around it because sometimes before I thought oh yeah that's really good haven't looked all the way around it and it's it's kind of chopping off something so we don't want it to do that and then you just look at that it's made a little hole now these processes will that looks great from the front but quite often when you're using a disc cutter you will get these little burrs on the back can you see that you've got those that kind of little lips so these can be sharp and this is where you need to do your finishing off so I'm going to just grab some of my pliers and I'm just going to nip that off now remember this is sterling silver you don't want to throw any of that away just pop it to the side and that can go in your scrap pot and I've also got some burrs here on the side of my star that are sticking up so I need to make sure that what I can take off with my pliers I will and you'll spend longer doing this than me because you've got all of the time to sit and really enjoy and be mindful with your making and then there'll be a limit to what I can do with my pliers so this is where I need to come in with my files so if we just have a little talk about files now these are JM files they're really really good because they're little ones and we can get files in all shapes and sizes so this little round file is really good if I wanted to go into my drill hole maybe make it bigger or smaller or if it was a bit rough and I wanted to smooth it off you can also get corner files but the one that I use the most is my flat file because you've got that tapered edge and you can get into the really tiny little edges and you can use so what how I would usually file is you don't want to sort of like scrubbing up down up down you usually want to file in one direction only so whether you prefer to file upwards adding the pressure and then off or whether you prefer to file downwards adding the pressure and off is completely up to you so I tend to do downwards now usually I would work this against my bench peg so that I had something to lean on but obviously I'm under the overhead here so yeah I would do all of the charms at once if I were making because you know then you've got it all finished and you can make all your charms at once pop them to the side and then you can texture all your charms at once pop them to the side finish all your charms pop them to the side and then it's kind of like looking it's like when you open the calendar it's looking forward to that final part where you put everything together everything comes together and you end up with an absolutely gorgeous piece of finished jewelry so if you're needing a tool kit which you, you really need if you want to make jewelry you're going to need your chain nose your round nose plies you're going to need that for pretty much everything that you do so there is one on the screen now it's our tool kit it's got your round nose your chain nose your side cutters oh it's got a hand drill I need this file tweezers and sandpaper oh it, is that 19.99 that's a very very good price for all of those things so if you're wanting to start oh it's going lower so if you're wanting to sort of get the tools concerned to be able to sort of finish off basically doing what I'm doing today this is epic this is a very good one so there it is so you've got your cutters there you've got your chain nose which are the longer pliers your side cutters a hand drill is enormously useful um, you've got your tweezers and that's really useful as well <clears throat> excuse me your file and your sandpaper and we'll be getting to the sanding in a minute I've never seen a talk is that £13.50 that is absolutely amazing so you can actually get all of those things for £13.50 that's an absolutely I wish things like that were around when um, I was starting out because I had to buy like one tool at a time when I was starting metalwork I'd highly recommend that that looks absolutely incredible I didn't even know we did that might have to get one because <laughs> you can never have enough tools so what I'm doing is I'm working around my star and usually I would be holding this up to my eye line and making sure from all angles that I didn't have any sharp edges at all and then you also need to bear in mind that you've got the underside so often where you would have punched the hole you will need to go over the top so again you can use this file flat as well and then I would just put my finger on the top and put the pressure on the upward stroke just one way so I'm going pressure off 
pressure off rather than scrubbing it till I'm happy. And the thing you tend to find with star motifs as well is that quite often it will cut and your end will be a little bit sharp. So you don't, anything that you feel with your finger feels like that could dig into your skin or be uncomfortable, you're going to want to file off. So usually with a star motif, I will just blunt the ends of the star into sort of a rounded shape so that when I ran, uh, run my hands over, I don't feel anything sharp or anything uncomfortable that might dig into the wearer. That's quite important because the finishing really says everything about the quality of the jewellery. So I've got that there. Now, quite often when you punch out or pierce out a piece it will start to bend slightly um, and you can flatten it back down but first of all I want to add a bit of texture so let's talk about texture this is really interesting so I've got my block again here and I'm going to just bob my star onto my block now if you haven't got anything to texture with you can actually get a stone out of the garden a little pebble and, and whack it on I've used all sorts of things uh, to actually texture metal just to see what the outcome would be the things that we have here or texture plates which you can hammer on to rolling mills which is um, quite an expensive piece of kit that you would use if you were so serious about you knew you were going to do this for a while and you really enjoyed it texturing hammers really inexpensive way of doing it and letter stamps and other stamps really inexpensive way to do it and if you don't fancy doing any of that you can buy some of I was saying in the beginning our textured sheet which already has a little pattern on it so you would have cut out your star in that and then you'd have been good to go really that cuts out most of the steps but what fun is that let's use some more tools so if you're worried that this is going to fly across the room a little bit of masking tape will hold that down nicely now I'm going to do what I did on the finished piece and this is actually an impress art and it's just a swirl it was actually a letter set an A to Z but you do get some little motifs in there as well and this swirl is really cute because it doesn't really matter if you get the whole thing because it gives you that kind of swirly bubbly kind of effect which I really like so what you do with this is you just pop it where you want it to be, hold on to it and give it a tap. Now before I take it on, I tend to rock it forward and back and side to side so that I'm getting the whole of the image. Now this probably won't be clean now because I've stopped and talked to you, but so I'm rocking it like that, forward and back, not lifting it. You don't want to lift it. If you lift it in between, you're going to get so there if you can see that you've got a really clear image so I think that's really pretty on its own actually but let's just let's go I know God, I've been up since four I think I need a round of applause for getting that right in the middle <laughs> so I'm just going to do a couple more and as you can see the amount of pressure that you put on depends on a couple of things it depends on the gauge of the metal you're using also if you want the whole if you were doing a letter you'd want the to see the whole letter wouldn't you not half so you'd be very very careful with that but as far as these swirls are concerned I'm not too bothered because I'm just adding it for texture so a medium about amount of pressure it's really down to the hammer that you're using and this is quite a uh, use a hammer that you find very comfortable in your hand and you're not gripping too tight maybe not too long of a handle so that sort of all of the weight is there and then you're not sort of having to do this <laughs> because you're not going to get it too precise so as I was saying earlier once you've done that it does distort the shape of your star a little bit can you see it's kind of gone concave so what I'm going to do is pop them on a side there and just gently hammer down and this will bring it back to a flat shape. It will also show you where you may have missed any bird edges. So I'm going to just go in there and I'm going to take off that bird. And these work quite quickly, these files. Now, once you've gone all the way around this star with your file and you're happy with that, of what you've, you've, um, you've got in front of you essentially, we're then going to add some patina or some um, permanent marker. Now, what patina does is it gives you a colour or um, a, a dark colour or depending on what patina you use. And it actually stays in the little grooves of that pattern or letters or whatever you've used so that they stand out a little bit more. 
It also gives you quite a rustic feel. If you like a really high shine feel, then you can go on to polishing. Now I'm making this a lovely high shine charm. If you want to sort of really show, maybe you've done um, a date, maybe it's someone's 21st, maybe you've put someone's name or initials on there and you want it to stand out that little bit more, then this is a good tip for doing this. So you can use liver of sulfur. That's quite a smelly substance um, and it is, it is a uh, sort of quite a technical thing to use and you don't really want to be inhaling that. So if you don't want to have things like that in your house, I found when I started out a permanent marker was perfect for this job. So what you want to do is just go all over your piece and you want to make sure that your nib is fine enough so that you are actually getting into those little details those little kind of flourishes and if it's a letter make sure you get into all the little parts now you don't have to worry about getting this on the other parts because you're going to be able to very simply take that off and what you want to do there is just give that a couple of moments to dry off now this is the same process if you're using your liver of sulfur you would just drop this in a bath of liver of sulfur um, I also have a patina at home that you paint on and as soon as you neutralize it in water, it stops developing. So that's an easy way. You can also buy patinas that you paint on in the same way as I just did with the permanent marker and you can get colors. And that's quite pretty if you wanted to, maybe for Valentine's Day, you wanted to add um, a red to a heart or something like that. That's a really, really good way of doing it too. Now, once this has dried, which permanent markers tend to be quite quick with it, just make sure that you've got the shape that you want still and I'm going to give that a bit more of a hammer because it's still not flat enough for my liking now in this time I'm kind of stroking it if you've got a rawhide mallet you can hit it as hard as you want because it's not going to alter the shape you're not going to get any scratches if you're just using your regular hammer I'm sort of stroking it like this gently so that I'm maintaining the shape I'm getting it flat again from where I worked on it but what I'm also doing is work hardening this. So this should be super strong by the time I finished. And then I can see that I've got my patina there. So this is really fun, this bit. I love doing this. <laughs> when you're doing um, letters, sometimes a bit of nail varnish remover, just on a bit of cotton wool and just taken flat across the top. Don't let it get in the little grooves. We'll take that off. But also your sanding sticks. Um, we had some sandpaper in that toolkit that we just saw. Sandpaper will do it. Or your buffer, which this is essentially a block with four different types of sandpaper on it. And if you take that over the top, it will remove the patina from the areas that you don't want it to be on. And if you find it difficult to do it like that, you can put down, or you've got sandpaper, put your sandpaper down, and actually that's a little bit easier to get control. If you do a figure of eight, if I slow down, if you do a figure of eight like that, then it tends to make it even. So this is the most coarse sandpaper. So you can see it's taken it out of some of that. If I wanted to remove it further, then I'd probably come down to the next sort of sandpaper. And that's really working to remove my patina as I go. And then if your sandpaper doesn't get it out completely, then you can go and get your nail varnish remover onto a pad and make sure it's not saturated just a little bit and then just wipe it straight over the top. Because if you start scrubbing at it, you're going to get the patina out of the parts that you wanted it to be in. So once you've done that, you can use this buffing block to go down the different gauges. So this is the roughest one. I use that first. And then this is the second roughest. You can already see that that's getting more and more shiny. So I'm just going to give this a really good buff. Make sure that you get all of the edges in there as well. And then when I'm happy, I'm going to go down to the next one down. You will take a bit longer to do this than me. And you'll see that with each individual step, that's getting shinier. And you can angle it to the areas that you want. And then when you've finished, put it on the very last one, which is the lowest grit of sandpaper or on your block. And so you've got your little charm there all ready to go. So that started out basically as a little... A little sheet of, of whatever metal and then we turned it into a little charm so that was very very simple so now it's time to sort of put our bracelet together 
So what I'm going to do is move the block and bring back in my beading board here. So pop your little um, charm to the side because you're going to need that later or charms. Maybe you've made more than one. So we're going to start to add in the rosary linking to this chain. Now this chain is a paperclip link chain and you can use this just as it is. So you could just pop on a clasp and there's lots of different clasps available. I, I think in the calendar, wasn't there a heart one the other day, a sterling silver heart clasp because I certainly opened one of mine and that would be really beautiful. Let me have a look actually on the calendar. Let's have a little look. I think it could have been day three. Yes. Oh, this would be perfect. I don't know how they've done this. There's a, there's a whole load of uh, mechanics that have gone into this one. But this is really beautiful. And you also got that in the calendar. And that would be really lovely to add with jump rings there. That would be a piece of jewellery on its own. And, you know, if that comes around to the front, then how lovely is that as a focal point? So you could just add your clasp to this and then pop on a jump ring and add your charm and then jobs are good, as my dad used to say. So I better pop this back or someone will think that I've made off with it, which could happen by accident. <laughs> so I'm going to pop this in. So if you've got this, this from box number three would be really perfect. So we, apparently we still have calendars available, but can I just say that I got my calendar as a bit of a gift to myself, and I know I work here and all the rest of it, but when I open that every day, it's just a little, little something. And you know, so far I've had jadeite, sterling silver, a pearl drop, coloured elastic, more sterling silver, and I'm, we're only up to day seven. So I would highly recommend this as great value for money and a gift to yourself, oh, 99 99 um, I just, it's lovely. It's, I can't believe what's in there so far. I'm happy. So whatever else, it gets a bonus. <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do is decide on what kind of design I want. And the one that I did, I added two pearls. I did this for a couple of reasons. Because I wanted to add the charm, not to a link, but over the whole thing. And if I've got a pearl there and a pearl there, it stops it going too far. It can still move. I do like my jewellery to have a little bit of movability, but it can't sort of go up and down all the way, up and down my bracelet. So first of all, let's add a jump ring to this little guy. So this is where you're going to need. Let's grab some pliers. I'll put the other tool set away. So this is a jump ring, if you haven't made before, just basically a little loop and it's great for attaching things. So I usually use two pliers and you would open your jump ring like a door. So in other words, you're not gonna attempt to uncurl that, you're going to open it that way. The main reason for this, if you uncurl a jump ring, you're gonna really struggle to get that shape back again of that lovely round shape. So I've opened that jump ring. Now we were talking earlier about sizing jump rings. You need to make sure that the size of the jump ring that you have will fit into your piece comfortably with a little bit of movement, okay? So I'm just gonna close that and pop it to one side so that that's ready to go on. So I'm gonna find the center of my chain and I'm just going to, you can measure it if you want. <laughs> you can measure if you're a measurer. You can measure, not a measurer. Just I'm a bit of a by eye kind of girl. So I'm going to, by eye, just clip one of those links out. Now you don't want to throw that away. I know it's tiny, but just pop it to the side, put it in your sterling silver scrap box. And then what I'm going to do is add one of these little pearls. Now I found that 0.4 wire, which I have here, um, is perfect because it goes through your little links perfectly and you don't have to worry. Um, you're dealing with sterling silver here. So ideally, you'd want to use sterling silver wire. If you haven't got any, it's up to you if you want to use silver plated. Of course, you're the jewelry maker, but I chose sterling silver so that my whole piece could be sterling silver. But if you don't mind that, then it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to clip off a bit of wire now, if you've got featherweight headpins, we did a great bundle of featherweight headpins in our show today. If you haven't got any 0.4 wire, you can 
cut the end off a featherweight head pin or eye pin or ball pin and actually use that. So don't worry if you don't have any wire, you can utilize what's already in your stash. So what I'm gonna do is make a little loop onto the end of this wire. Now, if you want the loop to show, then you can use sort of a larger length, but I kind of want it to melt into this chain. So I kind of want it to be nice and small. So the um, sterling silver featherweight head pins that we did today, they were really good length. They were 30 mil and 40 mil, which means that you can just snip off the bottom of the ball and then you've essentially got sterling silver wire. So if sterling silver wire is not something you have in your stash, then just pop the end off your featherweight head pin and that's essentially 0.4 wire, you've got it there. So that's really, really useful. So what I'm gonna do is on my round nose pliers, right at the tip, can you see the little balls there in that image? You just need to snip that off. And then you've essentially got um, a great length of wire, certainly enough to do this project with, for sure. So, you know, you can, there's always a way. <laughs> well, there's a will, there's a way. So we're going to go down to the little tiny drawer at the end, because I want a little tiny loop. I don't know why my voice has to do that when I say little tiny. Little tiny loop. And I'm going to flick that over the top. And when you look at it, you might think, well, that's still not small enough, but that doesn't matter because you can, you can just keep pulling it till it's really tiny. Can you see? You probably can't even see that little tiny loop. So then we need to attach one end of our chain to the wire. And as you can see, that very comfortably goes through there, and that's nice and small, so you know, it's a little bit hidden. And then I'm going to wrap that loop. So I'm going to just take my round nose because they've got a tapered edge it's quite easy to hold without interfering with what I'm doing there and I'm just going to push that pin over the top bring this one out of the way and again I don't want to wrap it too many times because I don't really want to see it so I'm doing this for security rather than design so I'm going to go around once and then I'm going to snip that protruding tail don't throw it away it goes in the scrap pot and then I'm going to pop on a pearl of my choice so let's go for this lovely one the good thing about using the 0.4 wire or the featherweight head pins is that they're going to go through anything you want so if you've got um, faceted gemstones if you've got we did some absolutely gorgeous malachite on the show today um, little tiny malachites if you wanted to add um, your little rondelles if you wanted to add your seed beads your seed pearls then these 0.4s are pretty much going to go through anything so it's a really great gauge to have in your stash so I've attached my chain now. That is what we call in metalwork a cold connection, which means it's just as good as a soldered one because there's nothing to escape. When you open and close jump ring, you have that little gap. So sometimes if you pull on it, it can come undone and your charm can come off or whatever. With a cold connection, because it's wound round, it's very, very secure. So I would always say, you know, if you want to add to the security of your designs, add in that little wrap loop rather than a plain one. So once I've done that, I'm going to wrap loop the other side in exactly the same way. And I want these loops to be roughly the same size. So I'm just wrapping that around on this side. And before I finish the wrap, I'm going to give it a pull so that I know that that's sort of a little bit smaller than, than I want. And then I'm going to add the next bit of chain in, come here and feed it down so that this is what I have and then I'm going to hold it with my round nose pliers I use my round nose because they hold it nicely but I can still kind of get to what I need to do with something fiddly like this it doesn't cover anything and then once again I'm just going to do one turn because I want it to be functional rather than be able to see it so I don't want to see too much of that so I'm going round one and I'm going to snip that off. Let's pull that out. So that's how you would add your pearl to your chain, should you wish. And because the loop's a little, 
it just kind of looks like it lives there like it's always lived there on your chain and then what I did on my end piece was do exactly the same again but with this pearl so you find that how much space you want in the middle is completely up to you um, if you're going to add your charm actually to the link you would need a 0 0.4 jump ring but by putting two pearls on here it means that you don't need to have that thinner jump ring um, because you can put it over the whole chain and now you might want to do these as you go up so that you've got a bit of chain a pearl in that case you'll end up with chain left and you can sort of make some earrings or, or use it for an extender chain or something else so that's completely up to you so you've decided on your um, how many pearls you're adding and then you need to add your charm to your desired place so I've closed this jump ring so I didn't lose it basically but we're going to add this charm so I'm opening my jump ring just checking I'm in shot and I'm actually going to put the whole chain on it and I've got no issues then with and I also ugh, it came off hold on I forgot I hadn't put my clasp on the end you would have done so hold on there we go so I've got one pearl there and then if you're adding another pearl you do it in exactly the same way as I did before I also added a little pearl so that it hang down over the star you don't have to do that but if you want to it's on one of those featherweight head pins wrapping a loop once again and just attaching that to the front of the jump ring so if I hold on to it you can see you've got the jump ring there and then I just attach it to the front so it, it jingles around as you move I love jewelry that moves and I can feel that I'm wearing I think it's especially delicate jewelry because it's not annoying but you kind of know it's there and then wrapping that around onto your star so that's essentially what you've got and then I'm going to snip that off so you can do that now you can do, do that before and put it aside completely up to you so yours won't come off because you'll have a pearl on the other side I'm just mindful of time so we're going to pop that back on so I'll show you what we've got so far we have got our little star we've got our little pearl on the star and we've got one pearl here and then I added another pearl here that's the difference between the one you're seeing now and the one is that the calendar one I'll put next to it there you go I also use some smaller pearls so it's like completely up to you and then all that's left to do now is to add the clasp of your choice so if you're going to add um, a lobster clasp or maybe your lovely heart clasp you will need um, a 0.4 jump ring if you don't have a jump ring that thin that's where your featherweight or your wire comes in uh, to its own again and I'll just show you a quick way that you can do that so you're going to make a wrap loop just like we did before nice and small and this time instead of the chain you're feeding on your clasp so this might be your lovely heart clasp from the calendar and not all of us have different shaped um, jump rings and different gauges so if your jump rings are too thick to go into the chain this is a great way to get over that you can use one of your head pins or your wire and then I'm going to snip that off now you can either do another loop and just add it like that but sort of for a little flourish it's quite nice to add a bead so it could be a smaller one and then wrap loop to the other side so I'm doing exactly the same stages as I did before let me just trim that off a little bit and so I'm going to easily now get that through my chain so I'm going through my chain right on the end where I want my clasp to be and finishing that off again with a wrap loop so everything's super secure wrapping that around and then I'm going to snip that off like that and then on the other side I can do exactly the same but instead of adding my clasp I can just make a loop to attach my clasp to so I can do 
my loop there and then give it a little nip off. If I want to match the other side, I'm going to pop in my pearl. I'm going to wrap loop again, so this is super secure, to the other end of my chain. So it doesn't matter what stage you do this, unless you actually want to feed something onto it. But I tend to do my clasps last, just in case I come up with a brilliant idea at the last minute. <laughs> it does sometimes happen. And so then you've got a clasp and you can just close it, pop it on, and you haven't needed those really thin jump rings. And that's basically all there is to it. This one's got one pearl on it, but obviously the one that I made for the calendar has two pearls on it. It's exactly the same technique and then if you've got any chain left you might want to add um, some earrings that may be a piece of chain and one of the pearls on each um, earring so there's so much you can do with this chain I hope that that has given you a little bit of inspiration a little bit of food for thought don't forget to tune in for all of the other days I think I'm back on the 14th um, to do my next calendar and um, all this inspiration here uh, you can come and tune in for the whole of the calendar day so i will see you on the 14th if you're watching on playback that's the 14th of december thanks for joining me and don't forget to get making and get everything that you make into the wall of fame so that we can see what you're doing i'll see you soon bye <laughs>
And we'll talk about it as we do the crystals as well. We were talking very briefly about manifesting, weren't we, um, we were. uh, Deb? And um, manifesting. Uh, and quite often you do things, I mean, this isn't necessarily manifesting, but it's kind of meditation. You mm. imagine a light within you, breathing in golden light or white light, something really uplifting and positive and breathing out black kind of air, black light, whatever it might be. This for me, oh gosh, I've got goosebumps. If I was manifesting these pure spearminty gold uh, uh, colors and these gold these would be the colors that i would literally be breathing in yeah. it is so it's so soothing it's just equilibrium it's just tranquil it's just bringing you back to that normality isn't it's it? very calming and soothing amazonite it's very good for your your throat chakra so it's very mm. good for expressing yourself speaking <gasps> your truth wow um very good for working with in meditation mm. so you know holding on to it while you're meditating looking at it maybe lighting a candle um also associated with luck and success oh that's a fascinating uh, little factoid so obviously not we know that not everyone is into this but we mm. i'm very into it and we're talking about it um from that point of view aren't we absolutely absolutely this one here looks like a beautiful turner painting like a watercolor painting it's absolutely incredible um everyone is completely different yeah it's got the sea it's got the it's got the land in there it's got the sun off the sea it's absolutely beautiful uh 49.99 for you today honestly these are just incredible this one here as well that we've been kind of gazing at this one here on this side it's got like beautiful bits of crystal Look here at that. it looks painted it, it really does yeah. it really does it's absolutely superb isn't it well done you've got these gorgeous kind of bands these beautiful every single one is different yeah sand dune kind of qualities 29.99 those are your brand new sterling silver findings as well which is absolutely amazing well done go 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 got these little bicones in between as well you know they're not going to be gemstones but you know use them in the use them in your jewelry if you want to why not i love this one here with that lovely band kind of going diagonally across the uh, the heart as well that's really beautiful it's like a little picture scape in each one you know it you really can, is you, i can see why they're really good for meditation because you know meditation doesn't have to be something where you sit there for like 10 minutes and try this and that you can just be immersed in something absolutely so immersed in having a look at at, um, at the stone and just focusing your mind that's meditation one of these i mean as you can see here deb has just put one on a chain that looks i mean that chain is beautiful by the way wherever you got that from but it's just absolutely beautiful a 60 second clock to close 20 left um, less than 20 left um, actually enjoy it. add it please do add it to your order well done looks so expensive so high end but in actual fact the whole kit 29 that's 99 Amazing. well done two left of the multi gem kit if you do want to add it onto your order please please just go ahead enjoy every single second of it look how deb's added in kind of little kind of uh little kind of um uh, kind of little shaggy accents almost onto here as well which look absolutely beautiful it's just gorgeous isn't it so pretty i think if you are wearing your jewelry with the thought of crystal healing mm. then you could add all the crystals that you're drawn to or if you know the properties you know the ones that you need yes you, know, you can add them to something like that and have lots of different ones to wear it over the chakra that it's attributed yeah. with as well whether it's the throat or the heart or the solar plexus or the root chakra um great great uh shout but yeah just just to hold on to these when you're meditating or, or when you're just taking five minutes as Deb says d meditating doesn't have to be you know sitting there you know like this know. it can literally be sitting in your kitchen watching the birds on the bird feeder and just yes. taking a sec just having a cup of tea just literally collecting your thoughts um what sorry which one lovely fluorite love this oh gosh now I've, you've got to look through these to fully yes. appreciate them my gosh now I don't know what you can actually see behind this here but I don't know how just look at that I would love to see some kind of window hanging that is just exquisite these are like petrol petrol blues almost look at this one here with all these gorgeous inclusions inside it these so internal these are great beauties for focus and clear thinking <gasps> um, they are Gosh. the heart chakra again very good for self-confidence so a lot of crystal healers will use this with um, people who are studying who are learning it's great to have earrings oh. by your head um, or makes give you them more studious charm, give them um, something to hold very good for people doing exams people studying oh, wow. how fascinating i didn't know that it's a wonderful stone isn't it it really uh, this green what is this green it's I just know, got it's such so beautiful lusciousness 
Oh, look at them all. They're absolutely beautiful, aren't they? They're just exquisite. Beautiful to gift this, I think. $29.99 for you today. Well done. Honestly, these are absolutely flying. Love how you've used one here above a lucite flower. I think that's just so pretty. I'd love to see it outside in a garden or something or in a, or, you know, as a sun catcher, something like that, because it's just, it's got such amazing clarity, such amazing purity. And by the way, these are enormous pieces of fluorite. Your fluorite, yeah. we don't know, we never get it in these kind of sizes, no. ever. Uh, and they will fluoresce in sunlight as well. I mean, not like the gorgeous highlight opal we saw yesterday, but it will kind of, it, it should give off some kind of a glow. Well done. Now, we have saved uh, the most unusual, and I think the best to last. It's a gem we have never seen on Jewelry Maker. To my knowledge, I've, I've certainly never bought this next gemstone to you. Um, you've got your uh, fluorite greens and the delicate purples well, and, and the rich intense purples. I think if you wanted to put it with something which would match but also be contrasting, it would, it's got to be this next strand, which of course is the pink aventurine. Very excited about bringing that to you. Do check out your baskets, everybody. These kits are very, very, very limited in quantity. Go, 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 go. Well done, everybody. Absolutely amazing. Uh, congratulations. Well done. Whether it's charms, whether it's pendants, whether it's earrings, whether it's going to be, um, you know, in a little keepsake, whether it's going to be something you just carry around in your pocket. Absolutely beautiful. Well done. And you can use all of these on your crystal grids. We've got some crystal grids coming in a minute. Mm. And you can use these, you know, the ones you're drawn to, um, you can use them in your grids. See, that's really powerful stuff, isn't it? Sometimes, you know, going for the gems and you feel attracted to. Always. Um, and, and, if, and if you look it up, quite often it, 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 there is a meaning behind it. Like you, it's something that you need. Yes. And this, oh my gosh, is pink aventurine. I bought you red aventurine, blue aventurine, yellow aventurine um, over the last few uh, weeks. Actually, we've had kind of a big kind of, uh, um, a kind of variety of different types of aventurine in. I don't think I've ever bought you pink aventurine. I love this pink. That recording there has got the most incredible incredible swathe of kind of pinks yes. in there the gorgeous nude colors as well it's absolutely beautiful i didn't know much about pink adventuring so i had a look and this is a very balancing uh, gemstone and it increases creativity it oh. helps to balance your energy you know if you're feeling a bit grumpy someday it, it, it can help to balance yeah, yeah. your energy Wayne get a truckload love yeah it can cleanse your negativity <laughs> so it can help you to stay positive um, helps with peaceful thoughts I need that and it's for the heart chakra oh so often people think of heart chakra as green but it's also pink, pink. so a bit like I think, rose quartz I suppose and then yeah. if we're going away from 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 all of that and just into how beautiful it looks how amazing with pearls oh yes absolutely it's got that cherry blossom quality for me it's got that spring cherry blossom promise it's absolutely beautiful we're going to give you a lower price point today we're at 49.99 we're going to go even lower even though it's the launch of pretty much yeah a brand new gemstone here live on jewelry maker here we go they are absolutely amazing aren't they they're gorgeous gorgeous kits these beautiful quality look at the variety yeah, you know, if you've got yeah. green or blue or orange or red aventurine, honestly, get these. They, it's, a, it's interesting. It's all, it's all kind of differently um, coloured, obviously, but it, but it's all the same kind of tone. It's all from the same gemstone. This bangle, by the way, I love this bangle that you've um, created here, um, um, uh, Deb. It's absolutely beautiful. That's such a lovely charm to have Aww. on there. My birthday today, so bought the pink aventurine for myself, says Pam. Oh, Pamela! Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Sending you lots of love. Well done, my lovelies. Here we go. Think of Pamela's birthday, Wayno. <laughs> Yeah, Amazing. there you go. Well done. A brand new gemstone on Jewelry Maker. Yours today, $29.99. With the findings as well, with the sterling silver findings. Um, absolutely amazing. On the strand, let me just count. I reckon it's going to be 17 again, but let me just double check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Yeah, 17 on the strand. Love this. It's interesting. Mm. On this strand, you've got lovely kind of delicate pinks and kind of whites and lots of lovely kind of moments of clarity. Um, in the uh, recording, you've got much more of those kind of mocha, kind of chocolatey biscuit kind of colours there. Uh, morning, gorgeous gals. Feeling drawn to the pink aventurine. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? Um, it's got lots of lovely nude colours in there. It's a little bit like a pink... I a think pink moonstone maybe if you read about oh, gemstones you can get very caught up in that and oh i need this for this and this for this but actually 
Forget all that. Mm. Whatever one you're drawn to is what you need. Absolutely. And like sometimes you'll be drawn to something that previously you didn't really like. Mm -hmm. And when you look it up, you think that's uncanny because that's how I'm feeling. So I think at this time of the year as well, it can be very, very busy and stressful. And this is a calming gemstone. So maybe you need a little bit of calm in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. With uh, green jade as well, that's going to look beautiful because it's got that kind of apple blossom oh, kind yeah, of feel to it then, hasn't it? I mean, this is going to be a great one for spring, a wonderful one. As we kind of um, head to also with aquamarine I'd love to see this with aquamarine that would just be incredible um, obviously with uh, all the gemstones on your grids as well whether it's the beautiful kind of um, honey colors you've got there whether it's with your kind of almost 